we're going to be talking all about whether or not you should get a flu shot. So the big topic, highly debatable, lots of fire, lots of people on one side of the aisle or the other. I'm going to try to lay it out for you so that you at least, at the very least, can go make an intelligent decision based on your set of circumstances. Again, we want informed consent. That's what making doing a flu shot, whether you should or shouldn't, is all about. I'm not, uh, I'm not very pro-vaccination when it comes to the flu shot for a number of different reasons, which we're about to talk about. And uh, you know, as much as as much as I respect anyone's decision to to inject something in their own body. Uh, I certainly don't want any trolls in the feed uh, creating a ruckus for no reason. So let's talk about the flu shot. I think fundamentally the question that you have to ask, and so again, the reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people just don't know. They don't know enough. They're not getting it because they're scared. Maybe there's some ingredients in the flu shot they're concerned about, or maybe their doctors just won't have an intelligent conversation. I think a lot of people just don't get that part. They don't get the intelligent conversation from their doctor, and so then they, they, they just don't feel comfortable with going in and getting it. Now, socially as a society, especially here in the U.S., it's a widely accepted procedure. As a matter of fact, a lot of your, um, like your, um, your grocery stores and the pharmacies within them, for, for example, like Kroger and Randall's, uh, if you have those Publix and CVS, some of these really, really common big you know, pharmacy-based or pharmacy-based stores, um, will give the flu shot for free or they'll give you a flu shot in exchange for store credit or a store gift or a coupon. And there's actually a reason why they can afford to do that because they're actually, in many of these cases, they're billing your insurance and getting reimbursed about $50 for that so they can afford to give you a $10 coupon or a $20 savings coupon to do that. That's kind of the dark side of, of the flu shot industry and one of the reasons why a lot of these outlets really heavily promote it for free. I say it's not free if it comes with a lot of added ingredients. And so there's two questions I like people to ask. Number one, does it work? Fundamentally, if we say let's get a flu shot to prevent a cold or a flu, then we have to ask the question, well, how well does it work? What is the efficacy of the medication? I think I think as, um, as any person subscribing or prescribing to a medication or following the orders of a doctor, we, we are owed at least that information. You know, what are the chances that it's going to work for me? And there have been a number of studies that show a, a wide varying range of percentages about whether or not and how well they work. But on average, and this is even coming from the CDC, 43% um, of the time, and again, it's numbers directly being reported that it works about 43% of the time and as much as 50% of the time, and some would say that that's even lower. As a matter of fact, a Cochrane database study where they where they analyzed, it was over 40 years of, of flu vaccine information found, uh, 40 years or it was 40 studies, I don't remember, so don't quote me on that part, but they analyzed all the data on flu vaccines and how effective they were, and, and in this particular study, found that 33% of the time the flu vaccine works. So that's the, to me, if you know the answer to this question, now you can make a better and a more intelligent decision on whether or not it's something that you want to do. Um, but the next question I like to ask from beyond does it work, and again, if this is a doctor pushing it, if your doctor's telling you you need to get this done, there are a couple of other questions that come with that. And I think one of the questions is do you get one, right? So ask your doctor, do you get one? There was another study published, and it was a uh, World Journal of um, Family Medicine, I think was the name of the, the, name of the journal. Um, do the doctors and the nurses that are recommending them actually get them? And one study found that 70% of doctors and nurses actually do not even get a flu shot. Now, this may be different if you work in a hospital environment. So if you're a hospitalist, some hospitals require their workers to get flu shots annually and so if they if they have an opt out the only way that the the nurse or the doctor could opt out is if they just if they choose to wear the mask as long as they're in the hospital seeing uh, or being around patients but that study found that as many as 70 percent of doctors and nurses actually decline don't actually get a flu shot which to me is quite alarming because if the rest of the world is saying how effective and how much you should get it but the people who are actually making the recommendation that more than half not just 40% or 30%, but 70% are actually not getting one themselves, then what does that say about answering this question? Okay, now, so that is a follow-up question. So one, does it work? Again, according to the CDC, as little as 43% of the time, and two, 
Um, does the doctor get it? Does the doctor take his own advice? Does the doctor take his own medicine? And when 70% aren't, that really begs some big questions about efficacy and safety. And that really is, you know, part two of this equation. Um, well, before we get into that, I want to I put in one more caveat because some people would say, okay, there are age differences, there are previous and coexisting disease differences on who should or who should not get one. Um, and, and so under two years of age and elderly with, you know, cancer um, or other immune issues are, are oftentimes said, you guys need to get these more than anyone else. In other words, the medical advice is generally these, these two risk are high, what are called high risk categories that need to get it more than everyone else. And I, and I will argue that that's not true at all. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. But I wanted to put that on the board because I wanted to make sure that we come back to it. Okay, let's see here. So it looks like uh, a couple of you chiming in here. Yeah, so that, that's a great point, I, I think, because many of you are, are, are timing in. How many of you have actually asked your doctor? So if you've asked your doctor, you know, what's in a flu shot? How many of you, and answer this in, in your feed, how many of you have asked your doctor what's in the flu shot and they didn't know the answer? So if, if, you, if you have been involved with your doctor on this, on this conversation, say he didn't know or she didn't know. Just type that in the feed. I want to get a feel for how many people have actually asked this question and got back blanks, got back no actual answer because that, you know, again, it's very important. How can somebody make a recommendation if they don't actually know what they're making a recommendation for? Hey, don't forget to check out the rest of the series right here. Make sure you hit subscribe below. And as always, thanks for tuning in.